Hi folks, Ryan Malloy here, Managing Editor at TheSeniorList.com, and today we're taking a closer look at the new so-called Senior Mode available on the latest iOS. Officially known as Assistive Access Mode, this new feature can simplify the layout of your iPhone home screen, as well as making the design of several key apps easier to use. In this video, we're going to walk you through how to enable this feature on your iPhone, how to fine tune its features, and how we think it compares to other phones made specifically for seniors. We're looking at you, Jitterbug. Before we dive in, I'd like to remind you to hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to see more videos of me testing out phones for older adults, be sure to also check us out on TikTok. All right, let's get into it. So at the senior list, we've reviewed a number of cell phones that are quote, made for seniors. And many of these phones, like the Jitterbug Smart 4, for example, are actually just Android phones with a simplified interface. Recently, with the beta launch of iOS 17, iPhones are now compatible with a simplified interface that many are dubbing iPhone's Senior Mode. And this feature is actually called Assistive Access Mode. With Assistive Access Mode, iPhone users can essentially streamline the menus, layouts, and features of an iPhone or iPad, making them easier to use overall. And while yes, I think this mode could be useful for seniors, it could really be useful for kids or anyone who's unfamiliar with the intricate features of iOS devices. Let's dive into how to set this up on your phone. To set up assistive access mode, you'll first need to update to iOS 17. This can be accomplished by going to settings, then to general, and then click software update. Updating to a new iOS, as you might know, can take upwards of an hour, and we've already done this. So we're gonna jump to the next step here. Once you've updated to the newest iOS 17, you'll wanna go back to settings, then scroll down to accessibility. You wanna click on accessibility and scroll way down to the general tab. And underneath that, you'll see a button that says assistive access. Click on that and then click up at set up assistive access and then click continue. Here, you'll be prompted to verify the Apple ID of the user. If you're setting up assistive access for a loved one, be sure that you use their Apple ID and not yours. Otherwise, you're going to risk sharing all of your contacts, photos, and other cloud files with the user. I've got some horror stories from back in the day when my mother, sister, and I all shared the same Apple login, but those are for another day. Anywho, after you confirm your Apple ID, you get to choose the layout for your apps on the home screen. Here, you will have two different options. The first one is rows, which, as the name implies, will display all of the apps in assistive access mode in row form. The next option is grid, which displays them in a grid form, except the main difference here will be that the icons in the grid, unlike the regular iPhone layout, will be much larger and easier to press. Let's go with grid here. Next, you can choose which apps are available in assistive access mode. As you can see, only calls, camera, messages, music, and photos are currently optimized for assistive access mode. This means that it's only these apps that currently have compatible simplified layouts. That said, you can enable any other app in assistive access mode, it just won't have the simplified layout. So to start, let's go ahead and enable all of the optimized apps. During this time, when you're setting up the apps and enabling them, you can fine tune some of the features within them, which we'll get into later. So after you set up your apps, you'll be asked to verify the device's passcode. I already have one on this phone, so I don't need to set a new one. But if you're setting up the phone for a loved one, you'll want to make sure that they know the device passcode, as this is what they'll need to unlock their device. You can also set up Face ID or Touch ID here, depending on the model of your phone. Next you'll want to set up an assistive access passcode. So unlike the device passcode, which you'll want to share with the user of the phone, the assistive access passcode you will likely want to keep to yourself, as this is the passcode that you can later use to turn assistive access mode off or on. So let's set a passcode. So here you have an option to set a recovery account if you lose your assistive access passcode. Skip that. All right, and now assistive access is ready to use. And there we have it. We are now in assistive access mode. To exit assistive access mode at any time, there are two different ways depending on the recency of your iPhone. If you have an iPhone with face ID, meaning it does not have a button down here, you can triple click the side button. 
On other iPhone models, the ones with the button down here, you can just triple click this button. Either way, you'll be prompted to enter your assistive access code. Let's try it. Exit assistive access. Enter the assistive access code. And voila, we are out of assistive access mode. To restart assistive access mode, you enter your device code, go back into settings, go back to accessibility, and go to assistive access and start assistive access. Enter your assistive access code. And there we have it. We are back in assistive access mode. Now let's see how assistive access changes the features of these apps. So like I mentioned earlier, assistive access mode is currently in the beta testing phase. So while it's available for anyone to download, it's subject to potentially major changes and refinements. At the time of this video, the only apps that support assistive access mode are calls, camera, messages, music, and photos. And by support, I mean these are the only apps that have an interface specialized for assistive access. However, this does not mean that you can't access other apps in assistive access mode. In fact, you can enable any app in this mode. It's just that when the user opens the app, it will have the normal interface, which depending on the user might not be what you want. So for example, let's say I want to enable the weather app in assistive access mode. I can go to manage apps and I can enable weather. All right, I'll allow it to use my location and let's throw in Safari for good measure. Never use my location. So now let's start assistive access again, enter our assistive access code. So now that I've added the weather app, it shows up like all the others in assistive access, as well as Safari, which I just added. However, when I click on these apps, we'll get the same interface as with traditional iOS. So let's click on Safari. All right. I guess the last thing I was looking at was Abercrombie. Let's see how the internet is exactly the same. The one difference here though will be the back button. No matter which app you are in, you will always have this back button at the bottom of the screen in assistive access mode. This makes it super easy to not get lost. Let's check out weather. Notice how once again, we have the same interface as the traditional weather app, but with the addition of the back button. Compare this to say when we open the calls app and we get something completely different. So this is something you'll want to remember when setting up assistive access mode for a loved one. You could enable any app on the iPhone, but most of them have not been optimized for assistive access. I do think though, however, as assistive access grows more popular, we'll see a lot more apps of all stripes creating simplified versions for assistive access mode. But for now, let's dive into each of the specialized apps. So let's take a look at the calls app on assistive access mode. For starters, just look at how simplified that is. Compared to the standard calls app, which has favorites, recents, contacts, etc., this just displays a list of contacts. When you click on a contact, you'll have the option to either place a voice or video call. As always, the back button is right there for us. And so like any assistive access feature, the front end is highly simplified. However, you can customize the interface to a great deal on the back end. So let's exit assistive access mode. So now we're once again out of assistive access mode. Go back into settings, accessibility, assistive access. And here is where we can adjust the settings on our calls app. So this first feature here, receive calls from, this will allow you to adjust who can actually make calls to this device. You can have selected contacts from your contacts app, all contacts in the contacts app, or everyone, including telemarketers, strangers, you name it. Let's keep that on all contacts. Here, as you remember in my calls app, there were only three contacts listed. This is where you can add or subtract or even add the ability to FaceTime different contacts. So just to show you, let's add my sister, Amy. Okay, now she's in there. The next feature is the dialer keypad. So as you remember on the calls app, there were only tiles for contacts. There was no way to actually enter in individual numbers. So let's toggle that on. And then for in calls, let's add on the keypad and the speaker. So now 
Let's start up assistive access again, enter our assistive access code. And here we are. So now when we enter the calls app, first thing you notice, there's now a place for my sister, Amy. We have added her to the contacts list. There's also a space where you can enter a phone number. One, two, three, four. Notice how the layout, even when entering a phone number, is a little bit simplified. So let's go back. We're not calling anyone right now. And then as always, there's a little back button down here to take us home. So in assistive access mode, the camera app is also simplified. When you open the camera app, you'll see currently one option to take a photo. As you might have guessed, let's take a photo of these lemons right here. And we've got a photo. But if you want to take more than just rear facing photos, you'll have to go back into your settings. So let's exit assistive access mode again. Enter our passcode. Go back into settings, accessibility, assistive access, and the camera settings. So this is where you can adjust camera settings. So when we turn it on, we only had rear facing photos. So let's also turn on photo selfie, video, and video selfie. Boop, boop, boop. Start up assistive access again, enter our assistive access code. And now let's go to camera. So as before, you can take a rear facing photo. My cat Bert just jumped in. Hey, hey. Snap. All right, and let's go back. You can take a selfie. Don't mind the greasy hair. Don't mind the cracked phone. It's all good. We're just gonna snap a photo. And you can do videos. Oh, what a great video. Video selfies work about as you'd expect, but the main thing here is to notice just how simple this camera interface is. There's no options to zoom. There's no options to change filters, aperture, or any of the settings that you'd find on the normal camera mode. There's just a simple button and that great iPhone camera quality we're all accustomed to. So after you take photos with your phone, they will appear, as you might expect, in the Photos app. So here's what that looks like in assistive access mode. Ah, look at that great photo. Oof. So notice how the photo tiles are much larger. And notice how unlike the standard Photos app, there are fewer controls for albums, searches, face recognition, etc. And unlike the camera and calls app, there's not really so much you can change on the back end here. However, you can change settings related to shared albums. So I think one of the most effectively streamlined apps in assistive access mode is the messages app. When you open it, you'll see your contacts and then you'll see the more button where you can access all of your other threads. But what's really interesting about this is the way it streamlines the whole messaging process. So let's open up big A, AKA my sister and send her a message. So there are three options here. We can send just an emoji Let's send her a little heart eyes because I love her. And then we can send a traditional keyboard message. Send. And we can send a video selfie. Okay, we already know this isn't good, but let's just. <laughs> and that's sent. Now she's gonna think I'm crazy. What's going on? Am I dying? It's okay. And then also the Messages app, much like the Calls app, has a lot of different settings you can toggle on and off on the back end. So let's exit assistive access mode again. Okay, so let's go into the Messages settings. So much like Calls, you can change who you receive messages from, selected contacts, all contacts or everyone 
who you can send messages to. You can toggle on a button that allows you to play the message through audio. Toggling on conversation details will show you um, the dates and delivery status of the message. And you can toggle on each of those little input methods we showed. So just for demonstration purposes, let's turn off video selfie and the emoji keyboard. All right, go back, start up assistive access again, enter our code. And now when we go into messages, Notice how our only input method now is to type. There's no option for the emoji keyboard or for those heinous video selfies. The music app is also streamlined for assistive access mode. However, there are some restrictions. With assistive access mode, a person will only have access to the music that you add or enable in your library. So for example, I have enabled these four Pointer Sisters songs and that is all they have access to. Even though I have Apple Music, there's no access to the rest of my infinite library. So to play a song, you just click on it. As you see, as you see, there's no complicated controls for an equalizer or any other buttons getting in your way. There's just the play button. The volume can be adjusted like so. And you pause it by either pressing on the song or on the big red pause button. If you go back into your settings, you can add more playlists and more songs, and those will become available in the music app. So as I've mentioned before, only calls, camera, messages, music, and photos are optimized currently for assistive access. However, you can add just about any other app to this. When you open that app though, let's for example, let's open Safari you'll see more or less the traditional Safari layout. You can type in another website. Oh, I'm in private browsing. Scroll and use it as you would normally. The one difference though will be the back button. And I think this will come in handy for most users. If you've ever given your grandma your phone, you might realize that it's very easy to get lost on an iPhone. So having this back button, I think is great. And I predict that as assistive access grows, more apps will become optimized for this feature. So overall, I'd say I'm pretty impressed with assistive access mode. If your loved one wants the smooth performance of an iPhone, but for whatever reason, they prefer to have a simplified layout, then assistive access seems like it's a great solution. The buttons are large, navigation is a breeze, and you have the dedicated back button at the bottom of the screen at all times. The only downside, as far as I can see, is that as of now, only a handful of apps are compatible with assistive access mode. And while other apps may develop versions that work with this mode, for now, internet browsers and other apps will have to use the standard versions. But still, if you're looking for a way to simplify an iPhone, assistive access mode is free, and if you don't like it, you can always turn it off. If you want to read our rundown of the best discounted phone plans for seniors, as well as our list of the best iPhones for seniors, be sure to click the links in the description and check us out at theseniorlist.com. See you next time.